Welcome to Today with Marilyn and Sarah. We're so happy that you are watching us and we really appreciate all you partners. We pray for you, we love you. Honestly, we could not do what we do around the whole world if we didn't have you. You're wonderful, you're a blessing. And I want to share a testimony with you. This is from Betty. She said, after seeing your program with Abigail Holt Jennings, I was reminded of God's goodness as I was healed from cancer just like her. You know, folks, when you see somebody else's testimony, grab it. If you need it, grab it. Don't you agree? I agree. And if you're watching and you have needs in your life, just encourage you to hop on the phone, get on the website. We love to pray for you. And we know that God answers prayer. And just a few moments here, we're going to be joining an interview with this amazing guest. This is my first time to ever meet her. And I'm astounded. She is incredible. And when you watch this interview, this is what will happen. You will begin to experience God loving you and God leading you into truth and helping you like you've never had before. And she reveals and talks about her journey and her testimony and what God has done in her heart through some really difficult situations, difficult family experiences, as well as some discouraging things in terms of theology and things that she had grown up believing that were a little bit, um, little bit sketchy. So I want to encourage you, put down the remote control, relax, settle in, let's enjoy this interview. And of course, hop on the phone, get on the website, just like Betty did. Um, it encourages your faith. We like to pray for you. And we know that God answers prayer. And remember, nothing is impossible with God. And this interview will encourage your faith to see that in a real life person as well. I don't have a safe place. I am scared. I don't have enough nutrition. I might starve. I live where there are little resources. I don't have a safe place to deliver my baby. We live in a war zone. And then saving Moses. Saving Moses gives me a safe place to sleep. Saving Moses gave me the therapeutic milk I need to thrive. Saving Moses provided someone to help me deliver my baby safely. Thank you so much for joining today with Marilyn and Sarah. We have a fantastic guest for you today. Oh my goodness, you'll love her. Her name is Lisa Brockman. Thank you, Hello. Lisa. Thank you. Thank you so much for Appreciate having me. Appreciate you being here. It's We're such a totally, pleasure. oh yeah, totally excited. Stoked. But not everybody in our audience is familiar with you. So can you give us kind of a quick biography? And then I'm really excited to talk about this book called Out of Zion. Oh my goodness, very compelling. Thank you. Yeah, I grew up in Salt Lake City, Utah, ended up marrying a man who's on staff, was on staff with Campus Crusade for Christ at the time, and he was my campus director, and we ended up moving to Orlando. I joined staff with crew out of college, and we have, I've been on staff now for 28 years, and we have five children, and I'm a spiritual director, author, and I work with a, a little arm of crew called Transform Arts. It's huh. with professional artists, and I love it. That's cool. <laughs> I agree. I agree. And How fun. You wrote a book called Out of Zion, yes. um, and that's an interesting book. It's interesting because of kind of your journey um, with faith. And those of you watching right now, you might be struggling in your journey with faith. Maybe you have some kids that are struggling. They're like, man, they used to know Jesus, but they walked away. And we'd love to pray for you if that's your struggle now or for your kids. So hop on the phone, get on the website. We love to pray for you. And we know that God answers prayer and especially when our struggling with our strugglings on faith. So Lisa, you wrote this book called Out of Zion um, and it relates to some kind of experiences with your upbringing in, in the Mormon church. Mm -hmm. Kind of walk us through what, what, that, what, what did that look like for you? <clears throat> well, from the time I was a little girl, 
I knew with all my heart that the Mormon church was the true church of God on this face of the earth. And I just longed to live my life worthily of a temple marriage one day. And so from the time I was um, as, as far back as my memory goes, all I wanted to do was find a man, make myself worthy of a temple marriage and marry there, have children, who would then be sealed to us for time and eternity through the Mormon temple ceremonies. And eventually, after this life, exalt into God and goddesshood in another world. And so that was my whole life. And everything in our culture, I come from five generations of Mormons before me, very devout believers. And so everything in my life, I would say worthiness, personal worthiness was the hinge on which my life swung. Are you worthy, unworthy, and striving and striving to make myself worthy of Heavenly Father's love, Heavenly Father's presence and acceptance. And, and I was given the guidelines for worthiness. And if I could perform, then I would be worthy for eternal life. And so that was the essence, the really short of it. Mm-hmm. By the time I was 10 years old, I became very aware I have a shadow side. Yeah. And I needed to hide that part of me because there wasn't a place in our faith community and in my theology that could hold that shadow with the light in me. Hmm. Hmm. You know, too, when we think about the worthy piece, uh, you know, feeling that and growing up in that, like in the Mormon tradition, I think, too, I think sometimes Christianity can have a little bit of that spin, too. Mm-hmm. And you might be watching right now, and maybe you're struggling with feeling worthy. <clears throat> Am I worthy of God's love? Um, did I earn it? Did I perform right? And we would love to pray for you to experience God's love, um, regardless of your worth, <laughs> your behaviors, your right choices, wrong decisions, whatever, that you would know God's love and who God is for you. So hop on the phone, get on the website now, and, and grab your copy. We want to pray for you that you would know the love of God. Mm -hmm. But I would also encourage you to grab this book, Out of Zion, because this book is a deeply personal journey. Lisa, I admit it's fantastic, walks us through her personal journey of experiencing God's love um, in times when you felt pretty unworthy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I mean, you went through some seasons like in high school that was that shadow side. You Mm want to walk through Mm -hmm. a little bit of that? Yes, well, I had worked so hard to do the right things, to choose the right, to obey the laws and ordinances of the gospel, and knowing I couldn't do it perfectly. By the time, it sort of felt like throwing, skipping stones into the bedrock of my eternal destiny, like eternal life when I was a little girl. But as I grew into high school years, I, it felt more like dragging boulders, this whole journey of personal worthiness. And there was so much shame that I wore. It's like a cloak of shame when I wasn't worthy. And as I, I had, I didn't know a Jesus who took that shame on him. So I was covered in my shame. And by the time I was a senior in high school, I just was like, I'm done with this whole worthiness, this shame thing. And I don't think I was that cognitive in it, but looking back, I can articulate what that was. And I just wanted freedom. And so my friends who were partying and consuming alcohol, they seemed to be free of the shame for a night and then for a season. And there was something really attractive about that. So my senior year of high school, I began to funnel beer with the same passion. I had worked to be worthy of God's love and acceptance. And I'd shut down my conscience, just one choice at a time, one party at a time. And I can remember very vividly just shutting my soul down. And I did find freedom from the law, but what I didn't know is that there was a deeper bondage intertwining or equally binding my soul. And so it was in that place that I ended up at the University of Utah playing tennis for them instead of Brigham Young University because I was not living a lifestyle that was conducive to life at Brigham Young University at the time. And that's when I met Gary. That was a key turning point. That was a key right? turning point, yes. You know, I went and spoke at a Mormon women's retreat. They watched me on television. This is many years ago. And so I said, now, I can't teach the Book of Mormon hmm. or the Pearl of Great Price 
the only thing I can teach is the Bible. They said, okay, teach the Bible. So for I one week, that. and by the end of the week, everyone there prayed the sinner's prayer. It was just a it's marvelous remarkable. opportunity. It was. I'll never forget that. I'm that was sure. in Nauvoo, Illinois. Yes. Wow. Yeah. One of your special spots. So interesting because, you know, you grow up in the Mormon and you, your parents are Mormon and they want you to be compliant and worthy. Mm -hmm. um, so were they aware of what was going on for you in high school at all? Yeah, they discovered my whole partying. I wasn't very smart in <laughs> keeping it under wraps. And that was a very difficult journey for them. Mm. I think it's hard for any parent when their child begins to make really destructive decisions. Oh, yeah. But for Mormons, there's a whole nother level of shame because parents are responsible for their children's choices. Doctrinally. Serious. Yes. And so they wear the shame. It's not just the child. When you're in a shame honor culture and in that community, the parents wear the shame. And so it was very challenging and I think difficult for all of us. Mm -hmm. More mm -hmm. difficult for them, probably, because I just didn't care. Mm -hmm. I was yeah. sort of that nightmare of a child by my senior year of high school. Sure. Um, yeah. But and didn't you me. have that in your book. I do talk about that in yeah. my book. I think it's wonderful to read your book because it says out of Zion. You know, and these are things we're not aware of, I don't think. Mm -hmm. But they're also opportunities for us. <laughs> This is a real opportunity book. You need to get it. It will help you identify and help you with the people who knock at your door. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. I like it a lot. Thank and you. I really appreciate you being with us. Thank you. Because going back there and being with them, and you know, they were very cool with me. If I'd say, pass me the water, they would push it down to me. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't talk to me. Wow. But once I taught the Bible, they liked me. Wow, well, I love that. <laughs> so that was a wonderful opportunity. But I began to understand what was going on. Mm. And that was a good yes. thing. Yes. You know, thank God for yeah. open doors. Yes. You know. Amen. And you'll love the book. It could open doors for you. Who knows who's in your neighborhood that you could witness to? I know my neighborhood had a Bible study. At least they didn't think they were having one. They just thought they were having some fun. But somebody taught the Bible. Mm -hmm. And so I think, look, knocking at doors, opportunities, they're the best. And, you know, you might be watching right now, and maybe you have kids who have walked away from Jesus, mm -hmm. and you're concerned about them. We want to pray with you for your kids. So hop on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray with you for your kids. Now available, Your Friendship with Holy Spirit by Sarah Bowling. Father, Son, and who? The third member of the Trinity, Holy Spirit, is often only associated with unusual manifestations and weird stuff. In some cases, scripture and the supernatural have been sadly mishandled and caused many to close the door to the Spirit altogether. But Holy Spirit is still a very relational part of the Godhead and desires to be in relationship with us. In this interactive guide, author and teacher Sarah Bowling introduces us to Holy Spirit and walks us through specially designed exercises to help us deepen that connection. Sharing personal stories while examining Jesus' introduction to Holy Spirit in John 14, 16, Sarah reveals the wonder of the one Jesus calls our helper, comforter, counselor, friend, and so much more. Isn't it time you got to know our wonderful Holy Spirit in a new, deeper way? Get your copy today. Are you questioning what you believe? Do you need confidence to share your faith with others? That's what happened to Lisa Brockman, a sixth generation Mormon. This personal worthiness was the hinge on which my life swung. For your gift of $29 or more, we will send you Out of Zion, the story of Lisa's journey to discover Jesus and the key conversations that led her from the faith of her ancestors to her conversion to Christianity. As you follow the evolution of Lisa's faith, you will be challenged to defend what you believe and ultimately learn to share the gospel more effectively with others. We will also send you our wholehearted CD teaching, Transformed for Triumph booklet and Soul Prosperity scripture card. For your gift of $59 or more, we will send you our beautiful pearl bracelet, 
Let this exquisite piece with five shell pearls and crystal spacers constantly remind you of God's amazing grace. Be bold with your faith. Call or click today for this life-changing offer. You know, I think all of us have had questions about Mormonism and how it works and what it does because people who will knock at your door and really feel that's a good thing to do and share with you and often you don't pay any attention to them. And mm -hmm. Out of Zion helps you understand why they knock at your door. Mm -hmm. And I, I like to have opportunities with Mormons. I really do. Because if you can get them into the Bible, you can transform them. So if they knock at my door, honey, they're knocking at my heart. And I love this book. It will help you understand what to say and not just turn them off, you know, but turn them on. Who knows what's in your neighborhood? I like to win people. So we have a special guest with us who's going to share with us more about it than I've ever known and love it. So open your heart to us because you, you were really raised in this, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. I was, I'm a sixth generation Mormon and it was my whole life, my whole culture. And I think that's what's most important to understand when you're in relationship with Mormons, that it's not just a theology. It's not just a doctrine. It's not a place they go to church. It's an entire culture and they're baptized in it, and they eat it, they sleep it, they drink it, they breathe it. Mm -hmm. And so when these boy, when these young men or young women come to your door, they bring an entire culture with them that has a language. They have their own um, language, they have their own stereotypes and beliefs, and it's so much bigger than just talking doctrine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you share that in your book. Yeah, my purpose in writing Out of Zion, one of them, was to bring the reader into the culture so that you're living it with me. Because once you, and you put yourself into the culture, I think it forms a compassion in you toward these wonderful people who are living in this culture of a works-based acceptance and salvation, that an eternal life that is heavy. It's a heavy yoke. And that's heavy on you. Mm -hmm. And even when you try to break it, that was hard, right? It was really and hard. And you share with that? It was really hard. Yeah. yeah. That's the Very hardest thing I've ever done in life. Yes. Yes. And so we're eager to hear her testimony. Yeah. And you talked about kind of just in the last little segment about meeting Gary mm -hmm. when you're in college. Yeah. And that was kind of a pivot point. What, what happened when you met Gary? Who's Gary? Well, Gary was a guy who was on the baseball team at the University of Utah, and I was on the tennis team. And a friend of mine on the tennis team wanted to line me up with this guy. She's like, you guys are going to click. You're two peas in a pod. And we were like magnets. And so Gary was also partying at the time, and I was still in my rebellious phase, still believing Mormonism was true with all my heart, but just not yet ready to return to living under that moral law yet. Um, well, Gary and I had dated about a month and we were sitting in the car one day and all of a sudden out of nowhere, he says, Lisa, how do you know the church is true? And nobody had ever asked me that in my entire life. And I whipped my head around and I said, because I've experienced a burning in the bosom, I know that it is. And he said, how could you entrust your entire eternal destiny to a burning in the bosom? And I had no other plumb line for discerning truth. That was just my normal. And then he asked me if I could defend the historicity of Mormonism. And I'd never heard of that before. And no, I couldn't. And could I defend the authenticity of Joseph Smith as a true prophet of God? And issues and osities and questions that I'd never never been confronted with and I could not answer any of them. And what had felt like this really solid foundation for my eternal life turned to quicksand beneath me. And I just felt like I am in a free fall and I need to figure out how to defend these questions and defend my faith. And I really believed Mormonism would stand in the end. And so I sought out to convert Gary to Mormonism and he sought out to introduce me to a Jesus he believed I'd never met. Hmm. That's a powerful, powerful oh, experience. You know, you might be watching right now and, 
and you have questions in your own faith. You're like, I don't know about this Jesus thing. I don't know about this Bible thing. Maybe you're watching right now and you don't even do that. You're kind of an agnostic or maybe you have a different faith tradition. And we'd love to pray for you. Pray for you to meet Jesus. We'd love to pray for you that God would help you with the questions that you have. So hop on the phone, get on the website. And, and I would strongly encourage you to grab Out of Zion. Because this book is a very personal, authentic rev revelation and whatever description of a journey that Lisa took. And I think you'll find it very, very helpful, um, informative, but also encouraging too. And one of the things I felt when I read this book is I genuinely felt God's love. Mm. And uh, that's really, I, that's really I'm powerful so because I think when you sense God's love, authentic love, that's a game changer. It's a game changer. And so when did you experience authentic God's authentic love for you? Well, Gary introduced me to this biblical God who was one God, who had always been God, who had not been a man like my Mormon God and worked his way into Godhood, but had always been all powerful, sovereign, all knowing, and always God. And then one God manifested in three persons, the Father, Son, and Spirit. And I was reeling. I just went into a tailspin every Bible study we did on Sundays. It was just this progressive um, argument on Sunday, every Sunday as we got into Bible study. And everything I was discovering was felt like 180 degrees from what I had been taught to believe in Mormonism. And so down to the nature of people, sinful versus divine, and the nature of God, and the nature of um, and what the plan of salvation is. And I always believed the plan of salvation was to exalt into God and goddesshood. And then we become gods of our own worlds. And I didn't have any idea that there would be this God who is all embodying loveness. I had never, ever experienced or encountered a God like that. And so in my search, I fought for 10 months. I fought this God and these ideas that Gary was introducing me to the, through the Bible. And then about 10 months into that search, and I had wrestled through so much. I mean, just scoured doctrines and histories and evidence that demands a verdict by Josh McDowell and all sorts of apologetic books on both sides. And then I was reading a book one day called Beyond Mormonism. And as I journeyed with that author through his story, in the end, I knew I need a savior. I am sinful. I am not divine. I need a Jesus to die for me for eternal life, not just to overcome the grave like I'd been taught. And I am powerless to save myself to an eternal life with him. And that eternal life is about being in relationship. It's the with God life. It's not just going to heaven someday and procreating and having my, being my own God and goddess. It's worshiping this God of love who's invited me into his community of love. And so I could not grasp this Trinitarian God. And I just fell down on my face. And I was like, I know I need a savior. I just don't get who you are. And it's like God just pulled back the veil and gave me this portal into another reality. And I had this vision of Jesus on the throne and surrounded by a sea of people worshiping him. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come over and over. And it's like I joined them and I was observing them and I was just covered in fear and my unworthiness. And Jesus came and gave me his worthiness oh, sweet. and clothed me in his righteousness mm. and brought me into his kingdom. Mm. Sweet. Then you just were kind of in receiving mode. Yes. You didn't have to do anything. Yes. Mm. And then the good works I've been able to do since then are because he's poured those that love into me and I just want to share it. It's not to make myself worthy of anything. I've been claimed, deemed worthy. Mm. It's the overflow. Yes. <laughs> the love of God poured into your heart, overflowing. Right. Yes. Overflowing to other people, to love well, to receive love and to be loving. Yes. Um, and authentic. And not like you have to whip it up and figure it out. It's already in there, yes. overflowing. And so I just encourage you today, if you've never experienced the genuine love of God, we want to pray for you mm -hmm. to know that deep experience, 
God's love in a deep way. Lisa had her own version of that. Mom's had her version. I've had my version of those experiences with God's love. And if you've never experienced, or maybe you need a fresh, fresh experience with God's love, we'd love to pray for you. Hop on the phone, get on the website, and grab your copy of Out of Zion. Are you questioning what you believe? Do you need confidence to share your faith with others? That's what happened to Lisa Brockman, a sixth generation Mormon. This personal worthiness was the hinge on which my life swung. For your gift of $29 or more, we will send you Out of Zion, the story of Lisa's journey to discover Jesus and the key conversations that led her from the faith of her ancestors to her conversion to Christianity. As you follow the evolution of Lisa's faith, you will be challenged to defend what you believe and ultimately learn to share the gospel more effectively with others. We will also send you our wholehearted CD teaching, Transformed for Triumph booklet, and Soul Prosperity scripture card. For your gift of $59 or more, we will send you our beautiful pearl bracelet. Let this exquisite piece with five shell pearls and crystal spacers constantly remind you of God's amazing grace. Be bold with your faith. Call or click today for this life-changing offer. It has been such an honor, oh my goodness, an honor to interview you, get time with you. Lisa, would you pray for us that we would have eyes to see and ears to hear what God has for us? I would love to. Thank you. Yeah. Well, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I just lift up everyone listening to this show, everyone watching, I pray that you would give them eyes to see you clearly, that you would give them eyes to see your face gazing on them, a gaze of love. I pray that you would give them ears to hear your kind voice speaking love songs over them. I pray that your love would move through all those spaces in their souls that have formed blockages, that you would penetrate and pierce through bone and marrow to get your love into people's hearts. And I pray that you would give people courage to turn to you if that's what they need. Maybe there are people who have things they need to leave behind in order to turn to you. I pray that your love and your vision, there, you would give them a vision of your love so captivating that they couldn't stay where they are. I pray that you would take them by the hand and be with them. And I want you to say this with me. Today is the best day of my life. Why? Because Jesus Christ lives big in me. Mm -hmm.